Starting with Omni Server version 2.9, we are now including a starter protocol for the Metlar Toledo SICS or 6 protocol for use with Metlar Toledo scales, which is a popular protocol supported by most Metlar Toledo scales. There are many available commands referenced in the protocol documentation for Metlar Toledo, but our starter protocol includes three of the most commonly used commands. In this video, I will walk you through the send weight value immediately command from the protocol document so you can see how the syntax from the document translates into an Omniserver protocol. That should allow you to add additional commands by using the starter protocol as a reference point. So I'll start by bringing up the six protocol document, which you can see here on the screen. And we'll take a look at the syntax required for the command and the response that I'm going to show you today. Uh, first, let's take a look at uh, let's first take a look at the basic information on communication with the with the scale, uh, so that we can find a few useful details. First, as you can see here, a command should only be entered in uppercase uh, by the communications master. Also, we see that commands are separated by spaces, and that the documentation uses a special character to denote. Uh, where a space should be included, which is this um, underscore type character that you can see here. Uh, additionally, we also see that each command must be closed by a carriage return and a line feed at the end. Uh, and we'll also find that a carriage return and a line feed will be returned by the device at the end of each response. So that being said, those are just some general details on how to communicate using this protocol. So now we're going to go just see, look at our specific commands. So we'll go to the level zero uh, commands that are available, and we want the send weight value immediately. So as you can see here, it gives us the command syntax that we need to be sending to the scale, and the responses that uh, the response formats that we can expect to get back from the scale. So. Uh, to send the command, we're going to type it. We're going to we're going to send to the scale a capital S, capital I, and of course we're going to terminate that with a carriage return and a line feed, and that tells the scale to send us the current net weight value, uh, whether whether or not the balance is stable. Now, once we've sent that command, what we can expect to get back, these first two are the typical responses we could expect to get back: um, an S. You see, we have a space another capital S, a space, then we get the actual weight value back followed by space and then the actual unit. And again that would be terminated by a character turn and a line feed. And that's going to be if, if the weight on the scale currently is stable then that's the response we're getting back. Now if the weight that's on the scale when we sent the command actually was non-stable or an unstable weight we would get back a capital S followed by a space then a capital D, then another space, and then we would get the actual weight value again, followed by space, the actual unit, whether it's grams, pounds, whatever, and then that's also going to be terminated by a character turn or a line feed. Um, now, there are also, as you can see here, there are a couple of um, non-standard um, error type conditions that could potentially be sent back from the scale like if the command wasn't executable, or if the balance was in an overload or an underload range. And um, we've actually accounted for those in the starter protocol, and I can show you what those look like uh, when we get take a look at those shortly. One of the nice things about this documentation is that it also gives you an example at the bottom that shows you um, what's being sent to the scale and an actual sample response of what we would get back. Now what that also tells us, uh, we can see here we've gotten an unstable weight back from the scale, and the actual value we can see is actually padded by spaces, uh, which is also going to help us in how we code the message in OmniServer. So I'm just going to reduce this protocol documentation, and I'm going to bring up the MT6 protocol, which if I go open my OmniServer configuration, go to the protocol section, it's MT underscore 6 underscore scale. So if I open that up, I'll just maximize that, go to my command request message list. The command we were just looking at is the wait request message. So I'm just going to open that up. 
message my message is enabled it is a write type message because uh, it, is, it is a situation where we're writing a command to the device and currently this is set up so that it can be triggered from your client application your HMI um, whatever application you need to get your weight data into um, and what we do when we're triggering an OmniServer command is we set up a trigger point or trigger item to which you're gonna write you're gonna write a discrete true uh, or a logical true to that value from your client and that's actually gonna cause OmniServer to send this message to your to your scale um, so currently the trigger point on this is an item named way and uh, this command is only ever going to get sent if you write a logical true or one to this item from your client application. Uh, so if we go to the request section, this is the command that's actually being sent to the device. And OmniServe is pretty straightforward. Um, you see we're using, since, since the commands are just ASCII characters, you'll see there's just a capital S and a capital I that we've typed in here. And then we have a carriage return and a line feed, which is our special syntax in OmniServer. You can also go into the SQL sequence folder by double clicking in the white space, going to single assignment, and we have a whole section of control characters, uh, which are your, your carriage returns. You can see here's a carriage return, um, your line feed, your end of text, your start of text. Um, and, uh, so you can also go into sequence builder and select those, or you can just freehand type those. Um, with the squiggly brackets surrounding a dollar sign CR dollar sign LF. Um, once you've used OmniServer for a while, you sort of get used to the syntaxes and you can just type those in. Uh, otherwise, if you're just getting started, just double click, go to single assignment, change assignment, and you can go in and you can select those characters. And you'll see that just adds those right in the box for you. So we have our command followed by our character turn and our line feed. With this particular command, since, since we can expect more than one possible response back, we leave this space blank. And what we're actually doing is using two different unsolicited messages to handle those different possible responses from the device. We have one of those configured for that stable weight format that we saw. So if I open that up, see that's, uh, uh, that's enabled. And you see we have our capital S, our space, uh, again, the space is one of those characters that you can select uh, from that control item section. Space character. Uh, another capital S, another space, and then we have our actual weight value. Um, you see weight inside curly brackets. That's an actual item that's been defined in our items list. Um, so that item is defined with the name weight. It is a data type of real, which is a 32-bit floating point. And um, so, if I go back, if I go back to my message here, you see that that item has been referenced here. To actually, to actually add items that you have configured in your item list, and I always recommend figuring out um, how many items you need. We knew we needed one item for that, um, for this particular command, because we're getting one value back from the scale. A weight value. So um, we would have defined one item. And, and the best thing to do is to add those to begin with so that you have them to select from. Um, again, you can use your, your sequence builder. Just double click where you want to add the sequence. Go on double assignment. You'll see I have an item list here. The item that I have defined in my item list shows up in this list. So I can just select that. And then we have all sorts of formatting characters. You can define a length, uh, like if the scale were going to send us back a specific number of digits, uh, we would define a we would define a width here. Um, since since we it's not going to be fixed length, since it could be uh, any number of, of digits, uh, we're going to keep that variable length by not specifying anything here. And, uh, and here you can define the data type. Um, normally, like for for a, for a floating point. Uh, which is what we can expect here. Um, and I know that based on the sample. Like if you go back and look at that sample, uh, the, the response, the example value is 129.07. So I know that's floating point or real. So that's how I knew that. Um, and I would normally define a real 
uh, normal. Now, since we know it's padded with spaces, we also want to go in and tick the checkbox for ignore leading spaces on numerics so that we ignore all those spaces that are padded at the beginning of that value. And you see that gives me my, my RQ for real, and the Q is for ignoring leading spaces formatting up there. And if I clicked OK, that's going to just add the exact same format that we already had in here. Um, so that's how that got defined. And as we could see in our protocol documentation, the value is actually followed by another space. And then we have the units, which we actually, uh, in this particular protocol, decided to ignore the units. Because in most situations, all that's really important to you in your client application is the value. Because you are already going to know what those units are. Um, like in this particular case, the skill is typically defaulting to a unit of grams. Um, so whatever you have that set to, that's always going to be the same. So we decided in the starter protocol to just ignore the units and not pass those along in an item. Uh, you could do that if you chose to. Um, as far as how we're ignoring those, we just have a blank sequence defined with a colon S. And that's the easiest way to ignore a variable number of characters uh, that are being returned by a device, uh, whether it's a scale or any other type of device. Uh, and then based on the documentation, we knew that after the units, we, all, we were terminating that with a carriage return and a line feed. Um, so that's what that format looks like um, if we compare it to this one, uh, S space, S space, value, space, unit, and then the previous section told us character turn and align feed. So you can see how that looks um, in here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's for the stable weight, and we have a similar unsolicited message defined to receive the unstable weight. Again, the capital S, our space, our capital D, our space, you just define that same item again the way we did in that previous unsolicited message. Another space, uh, again we're using, the, we're using this sequence with the curly brackets around the colon and an S, which is just a syntax for string data type, um, to ignore a variable number of characters uh, up, and, up to the carriage return and the line feed that are terminating the message being received back. Uh, so that's what those two messages look like. The weight value we actually get back from the device, depending on whether it's stable or unstable, will get parsed into the weight item, and that weight item is the item that you're going to be referencing from your client application. And uh, that value is going to get passed back to you when we receive it from the scale um, in that item. So that's what those look like. Now I told you there were a couple of error conditions, and if we go back and look at those, you'll see we could get back an S space capital S space capital I, which commands not executable, or we could get, you know, get back a, an S, a capital S space plus sign, or a capital S space minus sign. And how you handle that type of thing in OmniServer is you define an error message. Um, so you'll see here, here's an error message where we have an S. And for the spaces, you can actually just type a space in using the spacebar if you choose. I typically use the uh, dollar sign SP notation just because it's easier to see when you're looking at a protocol. Uh, but you can do it the way it's been done here with just a just a space bar. Um, so I have a capital S space and the plus sign. And back on the general tab, we tell OmniServer, hey, if you get this received message from a scale, here's what we want you to do. We want you to retry the message, which means OmniServer, if it got that, S plus notation back in response to the command, we would go back and we would send this command again um, and hopefully get a valid response next time. Same thing with balance underload. We tell OmniServer to retry if it gets capital S space minus sign. And the same with the execute not possible. Uh, we have a, an S space uh, capital I we just tell OmniServer, hey, if you get that, just retry the command um, until, until you actually get a valid response from the scale. So that's how that command is implemented. Uh, you'll see that we also have a uh, stable weight command, which is just the uh, S command that you can find in that documentation. And we also have a tear request command. 
Uh, all three of these are defined. These are the most common messages, commands that we see people using uh, with their Metler Toledo scales. But um, as I showed you in this document, you can use this starter protocol as a sample to really get a start with any of these pro any of these other commands that are listed, um, just using those rules that we've discussed today. Now, to actually use this protocol, you have to with OmniServer you have to define a device. So if your device is on is on internet is on Ethernet, you define a new one sock device. You tell OmniServer the IP address and the port number of that device, or if it's an actual serial connection to your OmniServer PC, you would just configure whatever COM port you needed to communicate with that and use the proper baud rate, data bits, parity, stop bits that correspond to how that how, you, how your Metal Toledo scale is configured for that on its COM port. And once you have a device configured, then you need to configure an actual topic, which is what you're actually going to use from your client application to communicate with your scale. And uh, so if, we, if I create a, a new sample topic, a topic name, that's going to be what you're referencing from the client. So I'll just call that scale. And then you select the protocol. Well, in this case, we're going to select our MT6 scale protocol. And then you would select either that COM device or that WinSock device that you just configured to pair the, to pair the protocol and the device together. And uh, then from your client application, you're just going to reference that. You're going to reference that topic name, and then you're going to reference the item the item names from the item list in that protocol, and that's going to allow you to communicate with your Metal Toledo scale. 